Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some of the most chaotic kitchens to be featured on Kitchen Nightmares. Make sure to stick around till the end, you won't believe how awful some of these restaurants are. Down City. Because the room service next door was shocking. What do you mean it was shocking? This Rhode Island restaurant was owned by Abby Cabral and her best friend Rico Conforti. They started it in 2005, but Rico had a full-time job in finance, so Abby mainly looked after the restaurant. And boy, was she a piece of work. Just in the first few minutes of the episode, she gets called Cruella de Vil and a psycho bitch by two members of the staff. She had made it clear to them that it was her way or the highway. Gordon Ramsay arrived and was received by Abby, who told him that the food was 10 out of 10. Wow, 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 wow. Unfortunately for her, Ramsay had already sampled their food in the room service in the hotel next door, and it was revolting. Abby replied that Ramsay was the type of customer she'd fire. Yes, you heard that right. This woman had the ability to fire customers. And after that bombshell, she told him he was full of shit. This episode had shades of Amy from Amy's Baking Company, but Amy's still the queen of delusion. Ramsay cut to the chase and ordered some food and told her that if she didn't cut out that 10 out of 10 crap, he'd go for her balls. That didn't go very well with Abby, but the famous chef did finally order some food, some calamari, three-way nachos, which the menu said was going to be a party in your mouth, and their award-winning meatloaf. The food turned out to be hopeless. Ah, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, look at that there. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm done on that one. The calamari was soggy, chewy, and disgusting. The party-in-your-mouth nachos were not any party you'd want to go to, and the award-winning meatloaf was actually some lukewarm, solidified chunks of crap. Sort of lukewarm, solidified chunks of crap. That's pretty much the norm. <laughs> With these kinds of descriptions, Ramsay was having a terrible impression of the Down City restaurant, and he called in a staff meeting. He castigated the team for their dreadful food, but Abby wasn't having any of it. She was still defensive, giving herself 10 out of 10, even though Ramsay and her staff knew that the food was abysmal. They had no head chef, which meant consistency and standards were non-existent. So, who is the head chef here? We don't really have one, but I guess... What do you mean you don't have a head I... chef? She stubbornly stood her ground against Ramsay, the person there to help. What's more, she didn't listen to her staff, and they, like zombies, just did what she asked. But wait till you get a load of her kitchen. It was filthy, trash strewn all over the floor, but the chefs just went on cooking. Ramsay called her down to the freezer to see the kind of place she was running. It was a mess, completely in disarray. Molding lamb bones dumped haphazardly into a container, strange-looking cheese in another, chicken carcasses and cooked pork stored carelessly. Abby still didn't get it and called Ramsay an asshole. I'm trying. You're being, you're being a f***ing asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold on it a wasn't minute. like this. I don't hold, run a kitchen like this. Hold on a minute. And for a person who insults others for a day job, Ramsay was surprised and fired back, calling her a stuck-up precious bitch. You stuck-up precious little bitch. Let me tell you oh something. Oh boy, here we go. This was an intense episode, and the two just kept going at each other like a cranky married couple. Definitely a must-watch episode. Campania. Then my uh, grilled sausage. I've never seen so much garlic in addition all my life. Imagine a restaurant run by high school kids equipped with ADHD and you get Campania. Joseph Seniglia bought the Campania restaurant in 2005, but he was failing to keep it as successful as it was before. It was located in Fairlawn, New Jersey, and even before Gordon Ramsay stepped foot in the restaurant, it was obvious what the problem was. Joe, the owner, was too laid back, and his restaurant had pretty waitresses, young male chefs, and a midget called Mo, who we saw emerge from a walk-in freezer. The staff, including Joe, played practical pranks on each other, a bit of the old roughhousing, and generally played with each other. A rather impressionable person could be left with a rather salacious impression. It was all very funhouse hanky-panky stuff, and that just would not do for any serious restaurant. Joe was over $250,000 in debt, with $80,000 owed to suppliers and vendors. His personal life was also in disarray. House mortgaged, unstable marriage, kids involved. No wonder his mother was worried about the stress he was under. Ramsay arrived in a taxi and ordered his meal. 
After 21 minutes of loud, boisterous, happy noises in the kitchen, Josette the waitress came out with some bland, tasteless tortellini and brewed soup. For the next disaster, she brought out spicy sausage ravioli, in which Ramsay found big chunks of garlic. Campania was off to a very bad start. After that charade, Ramsay was off to the kitchen for an in-depth investigation. Joe's freezers were completely stacked and fully stocked. It was obvious where his money was going. There was way, way too much food. Enough for a restaurant that expected to be fully booked for three to four weeks. And for Campania, that wasn't the case at all. The next thing Ramsay would tackle was the staff. There were just too many. During a dinner service with a handful of customers, there were 11 staff on duty. Joe was losing money left and right, and he was forced by Ramsay to cut out three people for the evening. As for the dinner service that evening, that was a failure. The service was extremely slow, the food wasn't great, and the portions were so large nearly every customer requested a doggy bag. Joe's profits were walking out of the door every day in doggy bags. Ramsey sat Joe down and asked him why he bought a business if he had no clue how to run it. This made him angry, he finally began to see some sense. Ramsey would continue to offer his assistance, and in the end, everyone gathered around and smashed all the large steering wheel-sized plates they had. A happy ending for a crazy kitchen. Sadly, this episode is more renowned for its tragedy. Joe committed suicide after the sale of his restaurant in 2010. Secret Garden Goodness me. The biggest problem with the Secret Garden was that the chef was French, at least according to Sammy, a server at the Secret Garden. Jane, another server, candidly stated that all French chefs are arrogant. Devon, the cook, said Michel, the owner, had an ego the size of France. But was his food any good? Gordon Ramsay was on the scene to find out. The Secret Garden was a restaurant in Moore Park, California, and Michel Bardavid had been the owner since 2000. Unfortunately, despite being at a great location for restaurants, Michelle was over $300,000 in debt and was losing customers. Ramsey chose to have the strawberry and fresh garlic shrimp, which he thought was a disturbing combination and disgusting. The shrimp was also undercooked. Oh, Jesus, that's disgusting. Next, he had the Rockfort stuffed fillet of beef. Sadly, this was another poor effort. The meat was as tough as old boots and had an accompaniment of raw carrots. And for all his Frenchness, Michel was a dismal cook, and Ramsay confronted him in the kitchen. He did not like Michel at all and was very rude to him. Tasteless, bizarre, the food was long-winded, boring and just, you know, badly done. But what made this kitchen so bad was the walk-in fridge. There was mould everywhere, on the food, bottles and containers. Maggots had found their way into potatoes, and to make matters worse, a tray of dark and white chocolate Ramsay found had finger marks on it. Like someone was dragging their fingers through it and either licking it or serving it to guests. Ramsay accused him of unsanitary habits, and Michelle just said that was how he worked. To defend his filthy habits, Michelle started rattling off names of famous chefs he'd worked for, like Thomas Keller, which only pissed Ramsay further. How long ago? I worked for Tomat for Gay Listen, Carson. yeah, hey, let me give Thomas you Keller doesn't run a kitchen like this. One of the most amazing chefs in America. He'd be no. embarrassed if he saw this shit. He ended up leaving Michelle in the freezer on this note. I've met some stunned fuckers in my time, but you take the piss. The famous chef then had the staff and Michelle clean the kitchen, and he threw yet another jab at the unpleasant Frenchman, saying he was finally showing some skills in the kitchen. During a dinner service where the slow kitchen kept the customers waiting, Michelle lectured Gordon on how French customers are more patient than American ones. His overly complicated dishes took too long to prepare, and it was only after Devon, the sous chef, took over did the customers see some progress. Even when he had another chance to prove himself with Ramsay's improved simpler dishes, Michel in no time had the whole service in disarray. Customers were ordering food he didn't have, and he was telling his waiters that those particular items were unavailable. The complete lack of communication left diners so unhappy that Michel was forced to compensate by giving out free meals. Despite Michel being at fault, he began yelling at the staff so much that his waitresses began to cry. Another day came, and this time Michel was swamped with many customers, and his kitchen was once more in shambles. A food critic in attendance even appeared to nearly choke on Michel's food. 
Ever the boneheaded French that he was, he blamed it on Ramsay's new menu and reverted back to his. Gordon, your menu is not better than mine. Oh, f you know. Yeah. That did not go well with Ramsay, and the two had an intense argument where Ramsay called Michelle a lazy donkey. Your menu is not better than mine. You know? You're, You're a donkey. donkey! This was definitely one of the most chaotic kitchens featured on Kitchen Nightmares. Well, that will be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys!